Hello everyone, this is Bradley. Long time no see. I have finished my project in which I have used this procedure water vortex. So I have some time to make the tutorial before being silent for another month or so. Due to someone's request, I have put the demonstration file on Gumroad for one dollar if you want to take a look. But I suggest you to follow the tutorial to understand what you can actually do with that. Uh, also, the file right after the tutorial will be included on Gumroad as well. Uh, to follow this tutorial, I suggest you to use the preset library in which you can download from the link in the description. So let's start. So here we're in Blender and you can create a mesh by yourself, subdivide the plane or we'll do whatever things. Uh, but I'm going to use the animation to create a, ma a procedural mesh. So if you hit the shift A, it goes to the mesh. And there is a section which is called generator. There is a line, grid, circle, cylinder, unit, triangle, and the regular polygons. Regular polygons are basically just a derivative of circle, like a different preset of a circle. But they are essentially the same. So you only have like five in total. But basically, I frequently use probably grid and circle for this particular case. Um, both of them are very similar. I think I'm going to use circle. And now we only have a mesh, it's still not yet a actual object. So you just uh, use the object of output. And uh, just hit this plus icon then, now you are actually generating the actual object. Uh, you can go through the wireframe mode to actually look at how the wireframe has been generated. If you increase the radio loops, you basically increase how smooth the circle goes. But if you increase the inner loops, it's the real thing that uh, you are adding the subdivision with in the circle. But everything is procedural, so you can all change these parameters later. So if you don't think you are actually dividing up um, enough for your circles, then you can increase all this amount. Uh, so you can actually test all these things by yourself as the time goes. Okay, And it's running very fast, like 3 milliseconds to create this mesh. Rendering will be another issue, but uh, it's very smooth to actually work with this setup at this moment. So now we have the mesh, but what we actually need to do is to actually displace all these kind of uh, vertices on this mesh. So we need to actually get the information of all these vertices. But this mesh output does not output any vertices at this moment. You just take a mesh info, so you can get actually all these kind of mesh uh, vertex locations, edge indices, and so on. Uh, and it will immediately replace everything with the mesh. You just uh, relink all these kind of edge indices and the polygon indices back. Our mesh has been regenerated. Uh, it looks kind of a kind of unnecessary step at this moment because why don't you just put a mesh in this place? But then we actually need all these kind of vertices data so that we can manipulate them. So now, first thing that I'm going to do uh, is to draw all these kind of center point uh, downwards to make a kind of funnel shape. Uh, and uh, basically the method is simple, it's just to uh, use the offset vectors and I'm going to use the um, point distance for. So after adding these offset vectors, you can see immediately everything has been moved upwards. If you increase the value, everything more upwards, but I'm going to draw downwards. But I would like to have kind of selectivity in the center, that's why I'm going to use the point distance for. Point distance for is basically the general kind of sphere. In this case, because we are working on a plane, so it's more kind of like a circles. So basically, from the from the center, you have uh, the 100% effects uh, as being told with this offset. But then later, you just decrease the amount of effect, so finally it goes to the zero. There is no offset. And then now this looks kind of very interesting, like a hat, an inverted hat. But it's not something that we are looking for. So in such case, you just use the interpolate the fourth and change the linear to the exponent. Then it will be a kind of a mathematical correct way that you generate kind of this real funnel shape. But if you would like to customize this more, then you can generate a construct interpolation and change everything to the exponent. You can hit W goes to view, so you can see about what we are, you actually have done. Or you can just visualize the hat that you just generate. And you can increase the exponent to make it sharper, or increase the base to make it sharper. It's just a different ways to manipulate these equations. Uh, I'm not a mathematician, and I don't know this math. Just have to play around with yourself. And another thing I want to remind you is this fourth width is still very valuable if you would like to play with all this kind of value. You can also increase the size, but it's not a very meaningful in my opinion in this case. I'll just keep that as zero. Next thing that I'm going to do is to displace all these kind of points. Basically, to add a displacement modifier, 
But instead of adding the space modifier within the action modifier, I'm going to use the animation node to do this. There's many reasons that I've done. I will probably explain everything uh, in the future. But basically, you just add a prelim vector noise. This is the only, probably the only preset that I've used uh, in this entire setup. And you can actually increase the frequency so that it's sm smaller the size and so on and so forth. And by making this offset, you can actually ani animate this entire thing. And then what I want to remind you, if you are changing this Z axis, then you can see there is kind of effect that you are drawn, you are actually taking all these points downwards. See, they give you such kind of illusion. Uh, while it's not necessarily illusion, it's just, uh, it's actually related to how these vectors computing, uh, how this noise has been computed based on all these kind of vectors that you input. So in this case, that's why I've actually offset the vector before the dis displacement instead of after. So this is kind of a very interesting effect. And you can change all these kind of amplitudes, but I usually just uh, use the same amplitude on X and Y. And you can make it small or large or whatever. And it, this is the Z axis that you can play around with. The CD is basically completely procedural, so you can play around with many different things. Okay, So this is the idea. Being able to displace uh, is very important before we actually make the actual vortex. The principle of making the, this vortex to happen is pretty straightforward. Uh, basically, the whole point is that uh, the center points will rotate in a much larger degree compared to these points, which is far away from the center. So that's, you can generate kind of uh, real actually vortex shapes, uh, basically here and here. This is how actually it works. So the principle is very similar to what we have done. And there are multiple methods to achieve what we have just said. But uh, I'm going to use a method which may look kind of very bizarre, but I think this is the easiest method for a beginner user to work with. And this method is called offset matrices method. And it looks kind of very bizarre because this is an orange socket. Um, but while at the moment, whatever we are working is the blue socket, okay? So what does it mean? How can we actually do it? Uh, if you turn, uh, basically, the blue socket means the vectors, and the orange socket are matrices. Vectors are very similar to matrices. The only difference is matrices contains rotation and scale, while vectors only contains three values, which represents either locations or scales. So we're going to use the translation matrix so that to convert our vectors into the matrices. And then we can use these orange matrices directly plug into the vector locations. You know, automatically generates a decomposed matrix for us. So basically we are generating two nodes, but the, they're, the reason that they exist is to do the conversion. There's no functional reasons while they are necessary. That's why I call that a bizarre. So now if I turn these rotations, nothing happens because I have to go to the advanced settings, go through rotations, uh, turn this global axis, global pivot. So if I turn these rotations, I rotate in this entire whole thing, which is kind of very nice, okay? So here, before I make the, uh, all the kind of vortex, I would like to duplicate this so that uh, I retain the ability to rotate this entire whole thing in the future. Next thing is I'm just going to manipulate this fourth so that uh, it will turn everything into a vortex. Here you can try to duplicate the point distance fourth that we are using earlier. And if you plug the fourth into fourth, you immediately you can see the vortex which is ongoing. And you can increase this fourth width so that it covers all the range or shorter range. That really depends on what you actually would like to do. But usually, maybe this looks kind of normal, it covers all the places. So you can see the vortex, uh, how the vortex is going. But the one thing that you re uh, I want you to realize is, as I said, this point of distance fourth is generating a sphere instead of a circle. What it, so the fourth now may look like kind of this. And you can see these, both this button edge and the outer edge are at kind of outer edge of this sphere, which means they are influenced equally within this fourth. But ideally speaking, what we actually want is the center point should be influenced the largest, while the outer point will be influenced the least. 
And because of the errors that we are making at this moment using this point distance fourth, so you can see the, this kind of button row is not rotated as much as we are looking for. It's possible that you have been satisfied with what we're having at this moment. But just to make everything more accurate, I'm going to change the fourth that we have uh, that we have made. I'm going to take a value the fourth. And if you hit this uh, one, two buttons, then it will generate a list and you can change the typing to locations. I'm going to evaluate vector locations that's when they are still in the same plane, so not being dragged with these offset vectors. And if I put this offset uh, point distance fourth, then it's evaluated all these kind of points while they're in the same plane, basically the same thing that happens with these offset vectors. If you directly plug these strengths into the fourth, it will generate a custom fourth conversions automatically. So now you can see kind of a subtle change with the fourth. Uh, and you may prefer the old methods, but I will show you why I'm using this method. So if I ch ch type these values, like a very high, like 5,000, you can see this is how it looks. Okay, Very much like kind of tornado vortex. And if you change to the original fourth, it looks kind of very jaggy. At some point, you might like this result. You may like this result at some mo uh, some moment, uh, but if you change that into the subdivision surfaces, you can see it becomes it should become much smoother, but it makes everything looks more ugly. But if you we use the new method, then it looks very nice. At least very accurate, very smooth. And if you would like to make the, everything is more kind of prominence uh, in the middle you just uh, increase the values or other things but just be aware if you increase the values the other places can be more horrible uh, it's it's actually kind of very tricky so you have to decide a value that uh, you will be satisfied and at the angle of your setup another thing that you can potentially do is you can interpolate the fourth that uh, as we have done earlier so you can use the exponents or construct exponents. You can do whatever or whatever things that you try to do. I, I don't know. Uh, just to make the things that you want. Uh, there are so many things you can play around that I don't have time to show you one by one. And by animating that, uh, it's just uh, if you try to just uh, 2500 or 1000, should it be a kind of nice value yeah and now if you try to offset the entire things it really gives kind of illusion that you are actually moving everything with all this kind of rotation okay uh, and another way of animation is just rotating everything okay and one more thing that I've discussed uh, I should have discussed is that I think I've discussed I actually forgot so if you go to the mesh and the generator you can also use the grid mesh instead of a circle mesh. It depends on your preference, what you want to do and so on and so forth. Okay. And these are basically it. This is not a many nodes. And this is really simple. So I hope you enjoyed these tutorials and I'll probably see you next time. Bye bye.